If you're looking at my shot right now thinking, damn, I wish my videos were this sharp, then keep watching because I'm going to explain how different camera settings affect video sharpness in ways that you've probably never heard. It's all connected, baby. <laughs> For this video, I'm going to assume that you are shooting on manual mode or at least in the process of getting used to that. And if you're still shooting on auto, I'm not judging, but I'm judging. So let's get into it. The first one we're going to talk about is ISO. ISO is how sensitive your camera sensor is to light. In more retro terms, it's basically what type of film you use. Is it 200? Is it 800? I don't know. I've never used film and I am not afraid to say it. Most digital consumer cameras start at ISO 50 and go all the way up to a very useless ISO 200,000. At ISO 50, the sensor is the least sensitive to light and at, let's say, 8,000, it's way more sensitive. Yeah, okay. Now, I know what I mean when I say this because instinctively, from working with cameras for 15 years, I know. But in making this video, I realized that I didn't actually know no, like on an intellectual level, you know? And so I found out. Come here. A camera CMOS sensor is made up of pixels, like physical squares. Sensitivity is a measure of how much each pixel amplifies the electric signal created when a ray of light hits it. The less light hitting it, the more electricity would be needed to amplify the signal to create a bright image. The more the signal is amplified, the more distorted it becomes. In cameras, this distortion is known as noise and grain. The lower the ISO, the less noise and grain you have and the sharper your image will be. Now, each camera has a native ISO. This is the ISO value at which the sensor performs the best and has the least noise and grain present. Sensor. Sensor? Sensor? I don't even know her. The higher the ISO, the more noise and grain you're gonna have and the blurrier your image is gonna be. In most video cameras, there's a digital noise reduction that's happening at higher ISOs. And that is great, you know, less noise. However, digital noise reduction also leads to a soft and blurry footage as a side effect. So in order to get the sharpest image possible from your camera, I would try to find out what its native ISO is. Just type in your camera model and native ISO and you're gonna get it. Some cameras have different native ISOs for different picture profiles and we're gonna talk about picture profiles later on, so stick around. Shutter speed. The thing that clicks when you take a picture that's the shutter. It's basically a door that opens for a certain amount of time to let light coming through the lens hit the sensor in order to form an image. Shutter speed is the amount of time that this door stays open. A fast shutter speed means that the door is open for a short amount of time. So less light passes through than a slow shutter speed where it's open for a longer period which means that there is more time for light to get through to the sensor. In photography, a fast shutter speed captures one very short moment in time and freezes that moment completely, while a slow shutter speed captures multiple moments because the door is open for longer and we get a smeary average of all the moments. Now, this smear and this blur is called motion blur. When filming video, the principle is the same, but instead of a mechanical shutter clicking open and shutting for each frame, the sensor turns on and off. So for a sharper, crisper image, you should have a high shutter speed. And for more motion blur, you should go lower. You can play around with this and find out what you like. However, the human eye has something called persistence of vision, which means our brains can process a constant stream of visual information. So there is no shutter and blinking doesn't count, but there is motion blur. And the amount of motion blur that the human eye sees is roughly the same as when a camera's shutter speed is twice the value of the frame rate. So if you're filming at 25 frames per second, your shutter speed should be 1 50th of a second. The motion blur created at this shutter speed looks the most natural. The further away you move from this number, the more digital or artificial your footage will look. One place where it's beneficial to pick a shutter speed that is more than twice the frame rate is when you shoot slow motion. If you were to shoot a video at 50 frames per second, 
I would go for a shutter speed of anything higher than 1 100th. At 1 200th, you would get almost zero motion blur and really smooth and sharp slow motion. But you'd also need more light because the higher your shutter speed, the less time light has to reach the sensor, which means the more light you'll need in your scene. Aperture. This is the mechanism that controls the size of the opening of the lens. You know it as the f-stop value. This can range from f1.4 all the way to f22. The lowest value means that the size of the opening is the widest, like my ass after Pride weekend. <laughs> While the higher value means that the opening is teeny tiny, like my piece. No, Anthony, we're not doing that. Shooting at a wider aperture, which would be a lower f-stop value like f2.8, creates a shallow depth of field, meaning only a small part of the image is in focus while the rest is blurry. So you don't have a big margin of error with the focus, because if your subject moves closer or further than where the focus is, you get a blurry subject. But I'm the subject here. Look at me, I am the subject now. Shooting at a narrower aperture, which would be a higher f-stop value like f16, increases the depth of field, making more of the image sharp from foreground to background. However, higher f-stop values can lead to a softer image. The reason behind this is physics. In simple terms, you can't have everything. So, when speaking about aperture, to get the sharpest image possible from my camera, I would do the following. Shoot between f5.6 and f8. This is kind of a sweet spot where most lenses give the sharpest image. Again, this is physics. That being said, my personal preference is to have a blurry, creamy background, so I do shoot a lot of things at f2.8, f4, and also, I don't always have the perfect lighting conditions, and shooting at f8 just doesn't make sense then. Next, pay attention to your focus when you're shooting at a lower f-stop value, such as f2.8 or f4. It's easier to mess up when it's a shallow depth of field. And that's where the next setting comes into play. Autofocus. There's not much to say here. At the consumer level, autofocus has become good enough that you should just have it turned on unless your shot calls for a specific timed focus pool. I have face recognition turned on as well. However, it's not always perfect. So you should always verify and make sure it's locked on. I learned this the hard way at a shoot where I had multiple cameras and I just put everything in autofocus. And then when I got home and looked at the footage, I realized that the main camera had focused on something else and the subject was blurry. That was an expensive lesson to learn and I am paranoid to this day. Now, the picture profile and video camera affects the overall image sharpness by controlling how the camera processes and renders the image. Picture profiles are presets that adjust the camera's internal settings, including sharpness, contrast, color, and more. A higher sharpness setting adds more detail to the edges in an image and makes it appear a little bit crisper. However, too much sharpness can make the image look weird and have like digital jagged edges. Low sharpness makes the image softer, which can look a little bit more natural, but could lack fine detail. Picture profiles also control contrast, which indirectly impacts how sharp the image looks. Higher contrast tends to make detail stand out more, giving the impression of a sharper image, while lower contrast, which is more common in flat profiles like S-Log or C-Log, can make the image look softer out of camera, although it provides more flexibility for sharpening in post-production. Choosing the right picture profile depends on whether you wanna fine-tune the sharpness in camera or leave room to mess around with it in post-production. Now, white balance doesn't directly affect camera sharpness, but it does play a role in the overall clarity and perception of an image, which can impact how sharp the image appears. When you get the white balance wrong and you have to fix it in post, you're gonna have to push the colors in all different directions and you have to go to the extreme. And when you fuck around with it too much, 
you get a weird looking image that could have artifacts and more visible noise and that makes your image less sharp. So get your white balance right. The best way to learn all of these things is to just keep shooting and keep making mistakes and they'll instinctively get installed in your psyche. And that's how you learn. And speaking of learning, check out my other videos.